Hey guys, it's been a while. Kitty here. Um, I thought I would make a new video because I haven't made a video in quite a while. And I miss you guys. So, you know, I thought it'd be really awesome to make a video about different tips and tricks that I've learned and that I've gathered intel, I guess you could say, on. And I do have my little tablet right here with my little goodies that... Uh, my different tips and tricks kind of listed. Um, so if I look down, I promise you guys I'm not like ignoring the camera. I am kind of, this list kind of reminds me what I'm going to say because you know me, my mind just goes whoosh everywhere. And that video is still going to have me going whoosh everywhere, but you know, a little bit less whoosh going everywhere. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, this video is different tips and tricks that I've learned about going to the Disneyland Resort. Um, some of these tricks may work for Walt Disney World. I don't know. Um, I've never been there, so I couldn't say. And yeah. <sighs> Sorry. Tired. And I apologize for not making a video sooner. It's been a really, really weird few months, so hopefully things will start to settle down soon. And I'm hopefully going to the Disneyland Resort not this, not this Friday, not next Friday, but the Friday afterwards. I don't know for sure yet, though, but that's my plan, so hopefully that happens. Okay, on to the video. Uh, my first tip is if you're going to get a hotel, try to keep it at least within that block that of where Disneyland starts and Disneyland ends on, I think it's Harbor. Um, try to stay within that area because once you get past that, I know, you know, it's something you might want to stay on at the cheaper hotels. But it can get pretty shady, and a lot of the times those hotels aren't always, like, best. Um, save up a little bit more. Try to get one of the hotels that's on that block. I mean, there are some inexpensive hotels. You just have to know when to grab up the deals. And, yeah, it's, it's something you do want to splurge a little bit extra on. Because you do want a good quality hotel. You don't want to go to some, like roach infested place that's just not cool um next tip is if you're going to eat at the park i suggest bringing your own food um there are going to be things that you might want to splurge on like maybe a cinnamon roll or possibly you know hot chocolate here or there but you know bring your bottled water uh do not bring glass bottles or cans. I don't think they allow them in. I don't know. I've never tried. Uh, but just don't try because <sighs> I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. I only yawn in my videos apparently. Um, but yeah, don't, don't bring those in. I don't think they allow them in. Just don't try it. But you know, regular water bottles and soda bottles, they should let in. Um, I've even had them, they occasionally even will let you bring in something like, um, Coke from the McDonald's across the street, which is another thing I want to talk to you about, um, but I'll get to that in a minute. Anyways, bring your own food to the park. I know whenever my parents and my brother and sister, whenever my family and I go, we always end up bringing snacks, like, I'll bring, like, grapes or something, or granola or cheese it's you know just little snack foods um mcdonald's across from the park it is more expensive than other mcdonald's you know not by a whole lot but if you're buying for a whole family that little bit that each thing is a little more expensive it will add up um so yeah take that into account it's not the same as most other mcdonald's it's a little bit more expensive uh, at least when I've gone, it has been, and I can't imagine it's changed all that much since I've gone, so, yeah, um, and I'm not quite sure how the Starbucks is, it says, 
California Adventure if it's more expensive than most Starbucks or not, so I couldn't really tell you. Um, yeah, moving on, also something you'd want to splurge on as far as food goes, Dole Whip. If you're going to splurge on anything and you do like the taste of pineapple, you have to get the Dole Whip. Uh, a lot of the times there is a longer line for it. So that's something to take into consideration, especially during the summer. You will get lines that are about 20 minutes long just to get the Dole Whip. My suggestion is if you're going to go see the Tiki Room anyways, which I really do recommend because it's something you want to see just because it's fun. And it's also a getaway from, you know, the rest of Disneyland. It's a bit, you know, you just sit there and you kind of relax while you watch it. But anyways, Dole Whip, go, on, go into where the waiting area is for Tiki Room, and if they have the line open on the other side, it is usually much shorter. Um, there's most likely still going to be a line, but a lot of the time it's much shorter, so yeah. That's always a good thing to think about. Um, next tip, Fast Pass. Fast Pass is your friend. As soon as you get into the park, especially if it's going to be a very busy day, ha uh, while you guys go wait in line for one ride, give all of your passes to one, or give all of your tickets or passes or whatever you have to one person. That one person will go over, grab a Fast Pass for something, then meet you guys back at the ride. Do it. And you can get a Fast Pass every two hours. Or once your pass expires, whichever, or once your, sorry, got a tweet. Um, but once your fast pass, the first time, the, the comeback time, once that passes, you can come back. Whichever happens first, the two hours or the, the time limit. But yeah, fast pass is your friend. And if you're going to be going, if you're going to both parks, uh, you can get one for both Disneyland and Disney California Adventure, or just California Adventure, I think it is now. But you can get one for both parks at the same time. Sorry, Star Wars chime going off. New phone, too. Um, which actually I will get to this later. I want to talk to you guys about something on there that I think is really helpful. Um, Anyways, yeah, Fast Pass is your friend. You can get one at either park at the same time. Um, pro tip, or blah, 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 pro tip, the Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin is on a different one, so I think you can get it no matter if you have a ticket for anything else. I'm not sure if it still is. I know for a while Big Thunder Mountain was. I'm not sure if it still is. I haven't checked it recently because I haven't gone recently. But fast passes are always cool. And then World of Color, something you want to get a fast pass to. It, it really is because otherwise you just can't enjoy it properly. You can either buy the packaged, you know, picnic meal or you can just get a fast pass over by um, the Rapids. Get a fast pass for that. You you want to see it. I honestly haven't seen it yet, but I've heard only great things about it, and I really want to see it. So, yeah, go get one of those. Having that will not affect your fast pass ticket for anything else because it runs on a totally different system. So, yeah. Um, speaking of shows you want to see... I do recommend seeing Tiki Room. I recommend seeing Fantasmic. If you're going to see Fantasmic, you want to get there a little bit ahead of time. Because people do, you know, wait out and sit and take all the good spots. And a lot of the time, if you get the right showing of Fantasmic, you can stay where you're at and watch the, show, the fireworks. Granted, it's not the best place to watch the fireworks, but it's still a place to watch the fireworks. The best place to watch the fireworks, of course, is like near in front of the castle and everything. But you'd have to wait for like several hours beforehand to get a good spot because people do start waiting a couple hours before the the um, fireworks actually start. So that's you know up to you whether or not you want to wait the several the couple hours in front of, in a good spot for it. Um, 
but by all means, you know, go ahead. That's up to you. Uh, you, the parades, the parades are always fun to watch. You want to get there probably about half an hour at least before and, you know, sit and stake out a good spot for that. Um, yeah. You know what? I'm going to split this into two videos. That way, if you guys want to watch the second video, um, you can. I'm actually, I think I'm going to record it right now too, so I'm just going to split it into two parts. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.